one thing I notice about your work is that it seems to uh, partake in such a wide range of language. Um, the most co common way I hear people describe you is a hip hop poet. And I think that's true in the sense that, um, you know, I can hear that rhythm in your work for sure. But there seems to be, you know, then I'll encounter phrases like the gutter the gutter sweep retrieved the muscle or uh, Shanghai souls. So that seem almost archaic. And then um, there's just such a range of language in your work. And so I wanted you to talk a little bit about where you gather your language from. Um, I, would, I would say that it's actually still very hip hop um, because the best MC uh, wants to pull language from everywhere. You know, the best MC wants to say something that you've never heard before, you know? And I mean, this is, you know, I often mention things I tell my students, but I, I say, you know, we can all write poems about trees, but you have to give me a reason to write your, to read your poem about a tree. Like if there isn't something unique about the way that you're approaching rendering that experience, then I might as well just go read anyone's poem about a tree, you know, why read yours? Um, which is, you know, my way of saying it's okay to write about trees if you write about trees. You know, if you write a poem that is about the idea of writing about trees, then I'm not going to care. Um, so I feel like any language can come into a poem um, if the goal is communication. So that's the thing. You know, it's, it's all about does it paint a better picture? If it paints a better picture for me, then yeah, I'm going to use that word. If I'm throwing it in because I want you to say, I want you to see like, oh, you know, he, he studied pretty hard for the GRE. I mean, look, look at his vocabulary. Um, that's, that's, that's not the point. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I do borrow um, from any language that I encounter. Um, but I also believe that I, I don't think it's necessarily um, contradictory that I do that and I'm also a hip hop poet because I think the best lyricists um, are borrowing and using language from everywhere. I mean, when I think about my favorite hip hop artists, they all made references that made me go to the encyclopedia or made me go to the internet or the dictionary because you know they're pulling in something like, oh, I don't know that word, oh, I don't know that reference. Um, and so that's my hope that I'm using language in a way that makes you curious about what I'm referencing, and you may go out yourself and uh, look that up. But you have to write through the self. And you know, I uh, I read philosophy. I watch Japanese anime. You know, I listen to hip hop. Uh, so I have all those different threads running through me. That's who I am. And you just borrow from what you are, um, and that's how you get yourself on the piece of paper. One, I think I mentioned earlier. I'm. A I uh, write book reviews for a number of uh, newspapers, so I, I read like s between six to eight books of contemporary poetry a week. And one thing that I've been noticing a lot is this real emphasis on the plain spoken American diction. Um, and it seems that in your poetry, one of the things that I really enjoy about it is that you're playing with your materials, and your materials are language. And a lot of times your language kind of announces itself as language. It's showy. It's um, acrobatic. It's, I find it really exciting. But do you feel that you're writing against the grain of... I don't... Hmm. I don't really write uh, in reaction to what else is out there. Again, like I, I give myself challenges. Like That's what it's all about. It's, it's really me saying, oh, I see what these people are doing. I want to do something different. And that's a good way to inform someone's aesthetic when you're young. You're reading everything, like, and what you like, you emulate. What you feel is missing, you try to fill those voids. So I understand that. But for where I am now, um, I'm just giving myself challenges. And you know, I feel like poets are caretakers of language. Like, that's what poets are here to do. You know, poets are here to remind people, like, no, a table leg is a metaphor. Like, it's not an actual. Thing. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's to remind us what is dead language, what is living language, how do words, um, what do they actually communicate? You know, what is the word you need? Like, one of the things when I'm, I'm reading my students' poems, the, the thing I do the most, graduate, undergraduate, it doesn't matter, I'm always circling phrases and saying, there's one word for this. 
Mm. There's one word for this. You go find it. Um, because there is so much language in the world. And I, that isn't necessarily about being showy, I'd say. It's about being precise, you know, as precise as you can be. Um, and that's why I think, you know, poetry is an act of precision. Uh, if you wanted to have an experience described um, in a long form narrative, you would go read a short story. But if you're reading poems, you're reading poems because you want to read and experience something that is compressed and intense to a certain degree. And that, I would say, um, requires precise language. But then, you, like I said last night, you can also have someone like Lucille. I mean, there are many ways to be precise. There is the right word, and there's also efficiency. Um, just in being direct and immediate. And I would say, you know, Lucille Clifton is someone who's amazing at just going straight to the heart of what she's writing about. She doesn't write around anything. There isn't any, there isn't any fat um, in a Lucille Clifton poem. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily say that her language is acrobatic, but I would still say she's a master at efficiency and concision. Um, so there are, you know, different ways to get at that.